Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the NPCNC series. It has been a while since the last episode, or to be more specific, it has been several months. I mentioned what happened a few times in other videos, but basically the problem is me not having a working 3D printer, but we will get to that later in this video too. This video was going to be like any other episode on any other series I do, including this one, clips recorded at the time and then edited together. But uh, when I was editing this video, I realized they don't really work very well. The problem was there were literally weeks or even a month between each clip and that meant that each clip was very disconnected from each other and the video didn't really flow very well. There were also a lot of audio problems. I didn't realize how much I improved the audio quality uh, in the past few months, but it looks like I really did. Basically, it was really difficult to hear what I was saying in some parts of the video because of the poor audio quality. So uh, yeah, I had to do this video like this, so I guess let's just get to it. The first thing I did for this episode was changing the board. I was using an SKR Mini E3 V2.0 as the board, as I talked about before, but that was me being an idiot. The thing is, when I was choosing the board, I just looked at the board, saw 5 separate connectors and I assumed it had 5 drivers and I didn't bother to check. And the reason I say I'm an idiot is because this is not something I didn't know about. For example, my wet Wi-Fi I used on my old Tevo and now on my Boron Zero has this feature too, along with many other boards on the market, so I really should have checked, but well, I didn't. So I had to get a replacement board. My options were fairly limited because I wanted 5 drivers, a similar size and the same weird mounting hole locations. I think that's specific to the Enter 3, but yeah, I wanted the same one because I already drilled the holes. The Big 3 Tech SKR E3 Turbo fits this description and looks like a pretty good board overall for this job. However, it may not be a great board for a 3D printer because I've heard that it has some problems with this thermistor or heater or something like that, so it may not be great for 3D printers, so if you're considering that for a 3D printer, do your research. It also has some weird uh, power saving features that need disabling for Clipper, but that is relatively easy to do. Just look at the example config on Clipper's GitHub. So uh, yeah, those don't really matter for an MPCNC build, so this board was perfect as I said, so I got that as a replacement. Next thing was the wiring. I showed you the direct chain solution in the last episode, but I don't think they were finished and they are now finished. So I got some quote unquote silicon ribbon cables to do the wiring. The reason for the quote unquote is because I really don't think they are silicon, but they did the job fine for now. They're also 22 gauge, which is thick enough. So uh, yeah, it will work for now. And eventually I might have to replace that. But as I said, it works fine for now. And then I moved to wiring the Raspberry Pi to the buck converter. And this is where something happened. I was setting the voltage on the buck converter using my random number generator, AKA my multimeter and it managed to read 17 volts as 5 volts and uh, yeah it shouldn't be that difficult to guess what happened after that I wired the Raspberry Pi after setting the voltage to uh, fake 5 volts and the magic smoke escaped obviously so uh, I really need to replace my multimeter at some point here is just an example of one of its faults in continuity mode that happens sometimes basically it's jumping from continuity 0-ish ohms to no continuity because well the probes aren't actually touching each other so uh, yeah this should give you an idea it's that's how broken it is I really need to replace my multimeter at some point. I fixed the voltage and did the wiring again, and somehow the Raspberry Pi still works. I definitely saw magic smoke, so I was really surprised to see this, but I thought it was worth trying. But uh, yeah, it works, so I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy about it. At least it's still working. So now it is time for the firmware. There really isn't much to cover about the firmware. I flashed Clipper as I said I was going to do and did the config after a few trial and error steps, and it seems to work well, at least for homing. But I heard that Clipper doesn't really support some of the advanced CNC specific G-code commands, so I may switch to something else at some point, like durable or something. To be clear, I know a lot of people run their CNC on Clipper without issues, so I know it works, but it would also be nice to have the support for the rest of the G-codes, so I guess we'll see in the later episodes. So now let's get to what caused the delays, other than the board of course. The board also took a few weeks, but the big delays were because of the end stop locks. I broke one of them and I needed a replacement. The problem is I didn't have a working 3D printer and I still don't have one by the way. I ordered a replacement from a 3D printing company and they took the, a few weeks to ship it to me. This is also covered in the Boron 2 episodes. That printed piece works but it really feels really weak but uh, as I said it was working so I was continuing adjusting the blocks so I can uh, home the printer square and while doing that I broke another one. 
I feel like PLA really isn't a great choice for these blocks because it is so brittle. I printed them in PLA because that's what the V1 engineering guys, the creators of the NPCNC recommend. But I feel like ABS would work better for this, so that is what I want to do. I will reprint all four of them in ABS, but for that I need a working 3D printer and we're back to the same issue. Fortunately, I think I am close to getting my Warren 2 working again, so the series can continue as usual pretty soon, assuming again I can get my Warren 2 working in the next few weeks or something. And lastly, there are the bits I bought for the MPCNC. I'm an absolute noob when it comes to CNC machines, so I just looked at what was recommended as starter bits and I got them and a few extras from Xcan on AliExpress. No idea if that they are any good, but I couldn't source name brand ones where I live, so this was basically my only option. I also ordered a 6mm to 3 point whatever, I'm not, some Imperial Tank adapter. That's because I wanted to use thinner bits, but my router is 6mm. The bits I got are some single flute end mills, ball end end mills, a sharp whatever bit for engraving, a chamfer bit and that adapter. We will see how well these work soon enough. That's it for this video, I know it's been a while since the last video, but as soon as I can get my Warren 2 working again, I should be able to continue working on this series, so stay tuned for that, along with the Warren uh, 0.1 upgrade, the Doom Tiny M build, and the rest of what I promised to do in the Warren 2 series, again stay tuned for that. As I said, that's it for this video, so thanks for watching.